This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome everyone to the worship of the Lord Christ this morning, especially those of you who are visiting with us today. You are our honored guest in the house of the Lord. And a special welcome to the baptismal families this morning. We're so glad that you could be a part of this morning's service for those most dear, near and dear to your hearts. And if everyone could take a moment to sign the friendship pad, and if you're visiting, give us some additional information, such as your email address and telephone number. We'd love to share with you more about what's happening here at Brick Church. Next week is Kirken of the Tartans Sunday. That's when we celebrate and remember our Scottish heritage on Reformation Sunday. It was over 300 years ago that the Church of Scotland gave a charter to Presbyterians in this country, and so we are grateful for those roots that help us to grow deep and wide and long throughout history. And also next Sunday is Pledge Dedication Sunday, and we're gonna return a favored tradition at Brick Church, and that is next week you'll bring your pledge cards forward and you'll put that and your offering in the baptismal fonts, in the, the font, and we'll also have the children do the same. So parents, if you have young children in Sunday school class today, uh, or they may have already gotten it, each child should get a pledge card where they can pledge to pray or pledge to help. And we invite you parents to work closely with your children to think through what God is calling them to promise and pledge in the next year. And now, uh, with all that in mind, we will have a moment for mission from Elder Mario Verdolini. Good morning. I'm Mario Verdolini, Vice Chair of the Stewardship Committee. Our theme this year is woven together in God's love, which is from Colossians chapter 2, verses 2 to 3. I'd like to take a minute today to talk about stewardship as a spiritual discipline, like regular prayer or attendance at worship. Our Reformed tradition focuses on God's goodness and as God is the initiator. We give because God gave to us. We respond by sharing our blessings in thanksgiving and out of our abundance that we have received, we give back abundantly. So our pledges don't just support our worship service, our beautiful music, our children and youth ministries, our many congregational fellowship activities, or even our outreach to those in needs as necessary and meaningful as those are. We give in thankfulness because God first gave to us. And we make pledges so that Brick can responsibly budget its activity for the year. And by now you should have received your pledge card in the mail together with our tartan brochure uh, in honor both of the woven together in God's love and of the Kirkin of the Tartan service next Sunday. You'll have an opportunity as Pastor Evans mentioned to step forward and place your pledge envelope in the baptismal font next Sunday service and the children will have that opportunity too. You can also pledge using snail mail or on the website or using the QR code uh, in your uh, bulletin or on the new Brick Church app. Uh, but even if you do that, you can come forward next week writing that you've already pledged on the pledge card. So we encourage each of you and your family to prayerfully consider the amount of your pledge because every single pledge is important. Our stewardship goal this year is two million, and to get there, we need everyone's participation. And we're aiming for 100% participation this year. This morning, the new member class has shown the way. Every member of the new member class agreed to pledge. So we have 100% participation there. Let's all join them. And thank you in advance for your generosity, and may you all be woven together in God's love. Thank you.
please rise and join your voices with me as we take our call to worship. There is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Please join your voices, join your hearts rather with mine in our prayer of adoration. Shall we pray? To you alone we dedicate this gathering faithful God. Thanks for your generosity and grace which unite us in worship this morning. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, we pray. And may God's spirit renew our spirits so we may be like Christ, our Messiah, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We learn in 1 John that if we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With this in mind, shall we confess our sins together. 
Since the beginning, you have chosen women and men to lead your people in your salvation. They forged a nation, liberated slaves, and gave their lives to lead us closer to your will. But we continue to listen only when convenient and to follow when expedient. Give us the courage to follow the seventh model of sacrificial love. Make us bold and generous stewards of all your gifts so that everyone might come to experience your realm of peace, justice, and love for all. Amen. Friends, before the words even come from your mouth as you ask for forgiveness for your sins, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross and rose again to forgive our sins, forgives us. Know that and be at peace. And since as we are forgiven and reconciled to God through Christ Jesus, let us be reconciled to each other. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us greet one another in the name of Christ. Please rise and share. At this time, all sixth and seventh grade Sunday schoolers can head to Sunday school. Please be seated. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. By the water and Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. On behalf of the session of the Brick Presbyterian Church, I present these parents who are bringing their children for baptism. Fergus Murphy Campbell and Mia Meeker Campbell. Brian Christopher Donnell and Erica Zach Donnell. Frank Wantress Hamilton. Diana Wilkie Hamilton. William Nolan Jennings and Carolyn Parker Reed. Taylor Corbin Moister and Sarah Rollins Moister.
I put these questions to you as parents of these children. Do you desire that your child be baptized? Do you? Couldn't hear you. We're going to do it one more time. Sorry. <laughs> do you desire that your children be baptized? Do you? Relying on the grace of God, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to nurture your children in that faith? Do you? Do you renounce all evil and powers in the world which defy God's love and righteousness? Do you? Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you? And I now put this question to the sponsors. Do you, the godparents of this child, do you promise as the godparents of these children through prayer and example to support and encourage them in the Christian faith? Do you? Do we as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture these children by word and deed, by love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ, and by our fellowship, strengthen their family ties to the household of God? Do we? We do. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling for order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into freedom. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By his death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to life eternal. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism, for in it we are buried with Christ in his death, and from it we are raised to share in his resurrection. So pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water, that this font may be the womb of new birth. May these children be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Bind them to the household of faith, guard them from all evil, and strengthen them to serve you with joy. Amen. Walker, will you let me hold you? Oh, yeah. That big smile? Hi, <laughs> big smile. Please name your child. Walker Murphy. We were talking about you in the session room while you were sleeping, and we know that one of your godparents has your name Walker in it. We also thought that we would pray for you about all the journeys you'll have in this life, that there may be many filled with imagination, joy, and love. And so Walker, we baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You did so good. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Walker, you were perfect. Name your child. Eleanor Rodinell. Eleanor, your name means shining light. And I pray that God's light might shine upon you and that you might reflect God's love to the world. <coughs> Eleanor, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Name your child. Edith Wilkie Hamilton. <laughs> Edith? <laughs> Edith. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can you see the water? Look. Edith, it's appropriate that your name means prosperous in strife. <laughs> and I pray that you might prosper through all of your trials. Edith, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Name your child. Elizabeth Parker. Elizabeth means God's promise. And I pray that all the promises of God's love rest upon you your whole life, and that in turn you share those promises with others. Elizabeth, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You want to sing? Please name your child. Rollins Moister. I think there's something special that you're wearing today. Do you know what it is? You have a gown that's 66 years old and was worn by your grandmother. And so our prayer for you is that one day when you grow big and want to have children of your own, you have some and get to hand this to them. How does that sound? Yeah, you, I think you're going to be a musician. I baptize you, Rollins. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, all men.
Let's get the parents and their children lined up right in front of the font, please, so that, you can, so that they can hear their first children's sermon. At your baptism, God shows you that for you, Jesus was born and laid in a manger, and that for you, Jesus lived and showed God's love, and that for you, he suffered the depths of Calvary and said, it is finished. That for you, he triumphed over the grave and rose to newness of life. For you, he sits at the right hand of God and watches over the whole world. And he did all of this for you before you knew anything. O oh Lord, uphold these children by your spirit. Give them a spirit of wisdom and understanding a spirit of counsel and of might, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and a spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Children of the covenant, you have been marked as God's own. Go forth in peace and live God's love. Amen. You may return to your seats. <laughs> The children, the children may now make their way to Sunday school as well. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, in remarkably simple prose and a handful of verses, God's plan of salvation begins with Abraham and Sarah. There is an incredible promise to these two, a child, countless descendants, and a blessing for all the nations. Listen as we hear these ancient words and consider how profound ways in which they have been fulfilled and found to be trustworthy and true. Let us pray. God of the ages, you have chosen people to work out your plan for humankind. As we hear these words, may we hear your call for us as well. Amen. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At 10,000 feet, the plane hits cruising altitude and the daredevil leans out of the plane. But before she lets go, she goes through her safety checks. I can feel the pack on my back. I, I, I saw the instructor put the parachute in it, and, and here's my ripcord. Check my altimeter at 6,000 feet and pull it. 
It's now or never. Yee-haw! Free fall at 100 miles an hour. The sound is deafening. Panic. Must pull the ripcord. But wait, it's too soon. 7,000 feet. 6,000. It's now or never. Oh, Lord, please let this thing catch. Ah. Whew. Peace. Quiet. I made it. That is the leap of faith. And it must have felt like that for Abraham and Sarah when they leaped from their homes into an unknown wilderness. It must have seemed an interminable time between the leap and when they finally felt God's loving, caring arms surrounding them. Faith is that leap, in, it's that leap until you wait for yourself to be caught, praying in the meantime that you don't go splat. That's when you truly learn what your faith is made of. Contrary to popular opinion, faith is not the certainty of the sun rising each day. Instead, it's that leap into the unknown, hoping, praying, that the God you believe in is indeed the one true God. Because of the courage of people leaping like Abraham and Sarah, God's plan of salvation moves forward. And in these next week, we're going to be exploring the key players in God's plan. People filled with faults, foibles, and failures, yes. But people willing to risk everything. But this sermon series and these people do more than move God's plan of salvation forward. It actually turns out that the willingness to risk and to leap is the key to a happier, more fulfilled life. It's the story of people like Abraham and Sarah who remind us that you're never too old to find a new purpose and a new calling in life. Today's world seems to think that younger and shinier is better, but scripture has a different point of view as the book of Job tells us. Wisdom is with the aged, and understanding with the length of days. This quest for youth at times is at best misguided and at worst destructive. And furthermore, it's simply not true that it is the key to some kind of happiness. It turns out that we actually get happier and more content as we grow older. It seems that uh, the 50s is the bottom of happiness, according to research. Sorry for those of you in that age bracket right now. But the research shows that from there, decade, decade by decade, you grow happier and more content until you reach your apex sometime in your 80s. There is a neighbor of mine, Taylor Humphreys, who is an excellent, uh, a, a renowned pollster who consulted for four different presidents. Isn't New York an incredible place? <laughs> and he and I were walking one day, and he shared with me some of the insights his research had shown. They found not only do you get happier as you age, but there are four keys to a more fulfilling life. And several of them I think you can guess. The first one has to do with money enough money in the bank. But he was quick to tell me, it doesn't take as much as people think it does. Next is good health, followed by a community of people, family and friends and loved ones who you can count on to support you and for you to support them in difficult times. And finally, and he said, this is the hardest one to quantify, a sense of purpose. 
And of course, Christianity is perfectly equipped to help with each one of those, but especially with a sense of purpose. It was C.S. Lewis who said, you are never too old to dream dreams or to find a new goal. What else besides a driving sense of purpose could have led Abraham and Sarah to leap from their homes into the unknown at age 75? Remember, when they got up from their country and kindred to a new land, there were no McDonald's, there were no rest stops. They had to wind their way through the wilderness. But it was a driving sense of purpose, this promise from God, this promise that they would have a child someday, and furthermore, that all the earth would be blessed through this child. And because they leaped, the promise came to pass for them and for us all. Perhaps it was because Abraham and Sarah weren't quite spiritually mature enough at their younger decades, and that's why God reached out. As Proverbs tells us, gray hair is a crown of glory. It is a sign of a righteous life. I'm beginning to get a few of those, I think, myself here. You see, they needed to be mature and ready because their call would not be easy. From the beginning, we discover that Sarah was a person of exceptional courage. When Abraham tells her that he's had a dream, he's had a vision from God, and tells her to pack everything up and leave home and leave security, she doesn't balk, but she goes. And then, later, when Abraham acts like a spineless jellyfish, not once but twice, she still sticks with him. You see, Sarah was a person of historic beauty. And Abraham was afraid as they passed through these foreign nations on their way to the land of promise that the kings would see her and take her for their wife. And so, as a result of Abraham's fear, he pretended to be Sarah's brother, allowing the king to take Sarah away. Fortunately for Sarah and for Abraham, God sent into these kings' hearts, well, the fear of God, and the kings let Sarah go untouched. And Sarah sticks with Abraham. But Sarah has her own faults, and not minor ones at that. It's her trouble with her ability to trust. That not-so-heroic part of ourselves that listens to the voice within rather than the voice above. The voice above told her that she would have a son. And the voice within said that she was too old. The voice above told her to wait and to be patient. And the voice within told her that she would have to act to make this promise come to pass. And so as a result, she invites her maidservant to go with Abraham and there is a child as a result, Ishmael. And she becomes jealous. And she sends them off into the wilderness. And yet, even at this point, God does not give up on Abraham and Sarah. We often think the Christian walk is about our faith and our trust in God. But in fact, Scripture is mostly about God's trust and faith in us, as misplaced as it sometimes seems. God believes in each one of you. And so in the midst of Sarah's greatest failure, God gives her a new name. 
Her original name, Sarai, was meant uh, to be understood as strength or power. But her new name means princess or royalty. God was making it clear that she would be the mother of kings and of nations. Sarah was about 90 years old by this time. And purpose brings us happiness because it brings us closer to God. And discovering that purpose at whatever stage in life you find yourself is critical. But we must be willing to leap into the unknown. A friend of mine a few years ago had finally reached retirement. And at the beginning, he suffered a devastating loss of purpose. He didn't know what to do with himself each day. And he had always been good with his hands. And so when Habitat for Humanity asked him to volunteer, he eagerly agreed. Well, after several months of hammering nails and helping to construct a home, the time came for the dedication of the house. Always a moving moment. And in this case, the mother of the household was sharing with everyone her two sons and how she was so filled with thanksgiving to God that they would have a safe place, that they would have a loving home to grow up in. And she was crying tears of joy, and as she did so, she said she was the first one in her family to own a home. And suddenly, my friend realized something. As he looked at his own hands, that they were used for a holy purpose by God. For the first time in his life, he had always before thought of his job as just something to bring an income home, income home, and that was fine with him. But at this moment, he realized something more, a holy purpose. And his hands had been used to bless someone's life. Benjamin Franklin once said, Those who love deeply never grow old. They may die of old age, but they die young. Let us be willing to leap and live that love to the very end of our days as we too discover our holy purpose from God. Amen. Mr. Moderator, members of the congregation, on behalf of the Brick Presbyterian Church in the city of New York, I present the following persons for membership in the Brick Church. As affiliate members, Philip Land, Elizabeth Land, by letter of transfer, Elizabeth Coughlin, Will Whitley, Abby Whitley. By reaffirmation of faith, James Brooks, Jan Kodalim, Celeste Dompsch, Matthew Dompsch, Katie Eshelman, Samuel Graham, Jay Murkison, Jane O'Hara, Hillary Peak, Robert Rossi, 
Jacqueline Sigmund, Marcus Sigmund, Jillian Timmerman, Parker Timmerman, and by baptism, Sibora Murkison. Friends, we rejoice that you desire to declare or affirm your Christian faith and to share with us in the common life. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. And I put these questions to all of you who stand before us this day to profess your faith or to reaffirm your faith in God. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do you? Do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love, do you? And will you be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way, and will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be, will you? Let us pray. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish all living things by the gift of water. And in the beginning, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order in life. O oh God, for this water and baptism, we pray that your spirit bind it into your holy purposes. In it, we are set free from sin and death, and the way to eternal life is opened. Pour your spirit upon this water, that this font may be the new womb of new birth. Bind them to the household of faith and guard them from all and strengthen them to serve you with joy. Amen. Sabora, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, uphold Sabora by your spirit. Give her a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and of might, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and a spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, you have come to know something of the Brick Presbyterian Church, and we are ever so grateful that you are standing before us today. Know that you have gained hundreds of friends who want to walk with you in this journey of faith. And not only do, do we want to support you and, and uh, walk with you in your days, but we also look forward to discovering the gifts that God has given each one of you that our congregation as a whole might grow in faith and in love. We welcome you, and especially that gift that no one else can bring to this congregation, that unique child of God that is each one of you. Let us pray. You call us by name, O God, and promise us your constant love. Watch over these newest members of our congregation Deepen their understanding of the gospel and their commitment to you and your way. Root them in love and keep them firm in their faith and in the communion of the church. Increase their compassion for others and bring them and us all deeper into the abundant life you hold out for humanity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Welcome to the Brick Presbyterian Church. Go in love and serve the Lord with gladness all your days. You may return to your seats.
The Lord be with you. As we gather ourselves as a community in prayer, we also want you to have the opportunity to offer your personal prayers confidentially. Uh, immediately following worship, a member of the prayer partners team will be available at the front of the sanctuary to pray with you. Uh, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for revealing yourself to us in creation. We thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has died and rose again for our salvation. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who through Christ has granted us peace with God. Help us to submit to your will, to confess our sins, and to love one another. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. As we begin the offering, let us be faithful stewards of our time, our talents, and our money, so that our treasure is in heaven and our giving pleases God. With gladness, let us present the offerings of our life and labor to the Lord.
The dedication for today is taken from the Heidelberg Catechism. Christ has redeemed us by his blood, but we do good because Christ by his spirit is also renewing us to be like himself, so that in all our living we may show that we are thankful to God for all he has done for us, and so that we may be praised, he may be praised through us. And we do good so that we may be assured of our faith by its fruits, and so that by our godly living, our neighbors may be won over to Christ. Amen. A few weeks ago, I was talking with a church member who's not able to come to worship all that often anymore. And he talked about his time helping with the facilities here in this building years ago and the work that he was a part of in refreshing the sanctuary and constructing the garden and the arts room for the school. And when I heard him speak, I heard the sound of holy purpose in his heart. He knew that he had been used in a mighty way by God through his gifts and in serving this congregation and God. And so I charge and challenge each one of you to take that leap, discover where God calls you to go, find that holy purpose, and find joy. May the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace from this moment and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>